We continue on our electrical science and principles series of videos with Chris Horn, and this looks a monstrosity, Chris. It looks very homemade. And just talk me through what we've got here and what we're trying to prove in this experiment. What I've got here, guys, I've got a what we call a pulse motor. Oh, that's what, exactly what I thought it was when I saw it. So what's actually happening is this. All I've got is from the range. Am I allowed to advertise? Well, you just did. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I've got some polystyrene flower arranging rings. I bought two sets. Put one inversely on this side, and I've just used the other one. The other one went in the bin quite a few years ago. And I've got some magnets that are going to be used as a bearing. Yeah, and there's a piece of wood on the front of them as well. Yeah. That's just to help the grip of the of the actual axle for the for the rotating ball, which has got permanent magnets in. Okay. Right. But they're all the same face, so they're all north poles. Okay, they're pretty much equal distance apart as well? The, yeah, the quart the quartered, so 12 and 6 on the clock and 3 and 9 on the clock. We've got a piece of tape on that. I'll come to that a little bit, guys, about that. So the actual gubbins, the, the actual makings of it, we have a coil, an electrical coil that obviously we're going to get a big magnetic field or a bigger magnetic field in there. And this piece here, this is a reed switch from an intruder alarm door contact. And then these wires poke around here and, and are connected to... We've seen this before, this strip of LEDs that I've used quite a few times. I'm going to make a pulse motor, yeah, and what we're going to do is I'm going to put this one on the top here and I'm going to balance the bearing on the magnets Okay. So we don't have we have very little friction. Okay, yeah, so just about on there. So it does take a few attempts for us to get this. It started. does, yeah. It We're going to self-start it as well, aren't we? We do because this pulse motor doesn't actually self-start. It's not like an induction motor where you know they, they'll start themselves. This is just needs a little bit of a nudge. We connected it to our supply, and our supply is at twelve volt DC supply. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a nudge, and hopefully, okay. oh, see the LEDs this side are flashing. When the coil's energized by having the magnet move across the reed switch, it gives a magnetic field out. And what actually happens when the magnet moves away from the reed switch? There's a the magnetic field that's inside the coil is going to be dropping and then that will then cause the emf from that magnetic field then will then cause the leds to light so it's not the the actual switch switching these on this is the dropping of the magnetic field in the coil that's actually lighting the leds and off camera we used this bit of kit here didn't we to get the revolutions per minute can you just remind me what we got there I've just got this little tack on me it's a little bit of tape that you was talking about earlier on that's onto the the ball that's rotating we have around about 200 revolutions per minute so if we divide that by 60 will give us revolutions per second it's around about three and a half maybe okay. three and a half to four revolutions per second that a polystyrene ball that's fed via the reed switch which is then feeding a coil is doing three and a half revolutions per second there's no strength in the motor because it's only a little pulse motor there's no torque in it as so but it's just a little ingenious little thing that I thought that uh, I've seen it and I thought well I'll replicate it and show my students. But this is a homemade DIY kit unlike this over here that looks remarkably like we're going back to Chad Valley and if you want to see that video it's on screen now.